All right, guys, today we're going to do a video about practical use of the circle of fifths for songwriting, uh, specifically for guitarists, because guitar is the main interest, uh, instrument I play. So this probably won't, uh, I mean, it can apply to piano as well, but uh, it's going to be mostly useful for guitar because I'm going to talk about things in terms of fret distances. So the first thing about the circle of fifths is just memorize it. And you can do this by simply writing it over and over again. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. doesn't take much. You can create your own little mnemonic devices. Like, for example, I always think this side is bead and then GCF, like greatest common factor, like pretend you're in math class or whatever. Um, yeah, so, and then you just, you can make up your own devices for that. Then the next important thing is to do uh, the relative minors for all of these. So, an easy trick to remember that is to just count one, two, three, four. So if we're looking for the relative minor of C, we go one, two, three, four. Oh, this is A, so it's A minor. And then you can do that for the whole thing. So you got G, one, two, three, four, relative to G, E minor. Once you do this, um, you can get, basically, you make a circle. So you're like, oh, what are all the chords I can play in the key of C? And, and uh, so you have your, your fifth and your fourth here. And then you also have your second chord and your, your minor sec, you know, the minor two chord and your minor three chord here as well. And then your minor six. So forgive my language. I know that's not how, I don't know if that's how they should be referred to as, but uh, basically the way you do it is now, if you're playing in the key of C, whatever your middle chord is, you can play any of these chords and you'll be playing in the key of C. So, you just make a circle anywhere else. So, key of E. So, you can play any of these chords in the key of E. And it'll always sound good. So, th that's that's part one. Um, and then, of course, the, uh, the seven chord is the, uh, the half diminished or diminished triad chord. That's pretty easy because it's just a half step down from your original tonic. So the seven chord for um, C, the key of C would just be uh, B half diminished or a B diminished triad. And then you can repeat that process, so on and so forth. Um, now we're going to get into the guitar theory part of it, which is kind of informal and will probably piss off music theorists. But I think it's really useful for songwriting and just understanding visual patterns on the guitar. So, without further ado, as soon as I'm done erasing this, then we can start. So, the further away you get from your original starting key up here, it could, or, or it could be anywhere, I'm just going to use C for simplicity, because it's at the top. Further away you get, the less notes you have in common in that given key. So, G and F have the most in common with C. F sharp has the least in common with the key of C. And you'll notice that if you go to F sharp, so C, F sharp is the uh, the tritone, so that kind of makes sense because it's like one of the most dissonant intervals, so it makes sense that it's the furthest away. It makes sense to our ears at least. Um, so now I'm gonna explore all the rest of the relationships and how close they are. Um, so we're going to start with F, and we're going to do it in terms of frets. So F on a guitar, if we're thinking of it in just terms of major power, uh, major bar chords, F is five frets above C. So I'm going to write five up. Right? <laughs> So you got C, one, two, three, four, five. So, I mean, you could think of it as six or five. I'm personally going to use five and not count the first note just for consistency. So, yeah, five up. And then you'll see on the other side, it's the opposite. It's five down. So we start with C and then we go five down. One, two, three, four. So 
So we got five down now. Then we got B flat. Okay. B flat. It's two down. And then we're going to do the other side as well, just to save time. D. It's two up. So we got two down. And then we got two up. Now we've reached the uh, halfway point. So, predictably, E flat is three up. And this is referred to as a chromatic median, by the way. I would highly suggest watching other videos about this because a lot of guitarists and songwriters use this relationship in their songs, particularly uh, Nirvana and Elliott Smith are two, of, and the Pixies are, are three bands that come to mind. Uh, all right. So that's three up. And then A is going to be three down. Three down, and then uh, A flat. That's four down. That's also a chromatic median. So there's two different chromatic medians. There's one that's three frets away, and there's one that's four frets away. They're all major chords. Now, you may recognize this sound as a very Nirvana-sounding sound, because uh, he uses it a lot in the songs. He uses both of these chromatic medians a lot in his songs. If you want to analyze chromatic medians, Nirvana is the go-to band to study if you're trying to figure this stuff out. Uh, four up. Four up for E. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could really think of it either way you want, up or down, like, they're kind of all relative, depending on how you want to look at it, but, uh, I just happen to do it this way, so you can think of it another way. So then, we're on C sharp now. So that's just one fret away, one up. And if you'll notice, that interval is a minor second away from the tonic, and minor seconds are also one of the most dissonant intervals, so... It also kind of makes sense that it's one of the furthest away from C on the chart. So that was one fret up. And then obviously B is going to be one fret down. And then we finally arrive at F sharp, which is a tritone, which is going to be six up or down because it's equivalent. It's it right smack dab in the middle. Yeah, so that pretty much covers everything that this lesson is about. Um, what I would suggest you do now with it is, uh, well, there's two things you could do. One is make up your own chord progressions. For example, this is how a lot, this is this is a really fun thing to do. Uh, so let's say we pick the key of C, and we're like, oh, uh, hmm. Well, the key of F shares a lot in common with the key of C. So maybe I can borrow this G minor chord from the key of F and use it in a C progression. Let's see if it sounds good. Let's see what happens. C, A minor, G minor, to F. Now that's kind of interesting. It's unexpected. See, like, and you can add your own little flair to it and just feel out the mood of the chords. Don't try to force things. Just, like, feel the mood of the chords. And honestly, this all just comes with practice and experience and experimenting. That's the biggest key is just experiment. I find that having this visual is really useful for experimenting. So I highly recommend getting a whiteboard or just a big piece of paper, honestly. That works, too. Um, and then, so that's the one thing you could do is experiment. And then the second thing you could do is listen to songs you like and then look at the circle of fifths and see what your favorite artists do. And then from there you can analyze it and try to recreate your own 
pieces of music that are influenced and inspired by them. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Yeah, I'm going to be that YouTube guy. I'm going to start reminding you. So, uh, yeah. So until next time, enjoy.